What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back in with a new video, and today we have to talk about the 2024 presidential election because Donald Trump's campaign is starting to build momentum. And I know everyone for about a month now has been talking about Kamala Harris's quote unquote momentum, which we have gone over many times. This momentum that Harris has is not real it's artificial it's bullshit it's not gonna last and that's the problem for the harris campaign they need this momentum to last for months when in reality it seems like this momentum they built which again it's because of the media it's because of the pollsters pushing crap it seems like the momentum for harris it's starting to slow down just a little bit. And you could argue that it's because of Trump's campaign the last 48 hours. They've done a lot of good things. Whether it's Trump publicly praising Brian Kemp, which I know that's crazy to think about. Just a week ago, Trump was attacking Brian Kemp constantly. And I even said that that was dumb. It's a waste of time. It helps no one. Well, it seems like Trump and Kemp, they put aside their feud. And you could maybe argue that's because of Vance. Who knows? But it seems like Trump and Brian Kemp, they finally put aside their feud and they're going to work together to flip Georgia. That's a big deal because Georgia is one of the states that Trump has to win. And if Brian Kemp is finally at Trump's side, which I think he kind of was this entire time, but for whatever reason, they just didn't like each other. Whatever. The point is, it seems like Trump and Kemp, they're finally on the same page for now. So they're going to work together to win Georgia. And on top of that, the past couple of days have been very good for the Trump campaign. Whether it's him using Twitter and reaching tens of millions of people, whether it's him doing a bunch of interviews, he's had a very good week. But let's be honest, all of that pales in comparison to this. RFK Jr. backing Trump. And not just endorsing him and calling it a day. No. RFK went to Trump's rally, went on stage, and he spoke. And I gotta tell everyone, of all the Trump rallies this cycle, this might be my favorite one. Not just because of RFK, because, you know, that's big, that's big enough news, but the message Trump was pushing. And you could argue of all the things that happened the past week or so, this might be the biggest win for Trump's campaign. His message. Like, obviously Trump talked about immigration, the economy, and all of that, but Trump, at least for the start of the, the rally, he had a different tone. He talked about different issues that he really hasn't talked about much beforehand. And that's, of course, issues that RFK cares about, such as freedom of speech, such as medical freedoms, all of that. And I thought Trump was just going to glance over that and call it a day because I, everyone kind of knew this was going to happen, that RFK was going to join Trump on stage. But no, Trump and RFK spoke for about 20 to 25 minutes about these issues. And I'm surprised how much I actually have in common with RFK. Now, obviously, there's stuff like abortion and other things that I disagree with Kennedy on, but on stuff that we agree upon, it's not just small issues. It's actually pretty significant ones, such as medical freedom, such as freedom of speech. There's a bunch of issues that I'm surprised that I actually agree with RFK on. I just thought I agreed with him on, like, two issues, and that's it. No. I actually have a lot in common with RFK and a lot of Trump voters as well. I was surprised by that. And that's why the more I thought about this endorsement, the more I realized this is a very impactful one. This is not just one that could possibly swing the polls by a quarter of a point and that's it. This is one of those things that could completely change the campaign. And I think it will. And I'm not talking about, oh, the polling will shift a point and that's it. No, I believe not only will the polling shift towards Trump, but Trump has a brand new message to run on. And of course, he cannot ignore issues like the economy, immigration, all that. Of course, those are still the main issues. But the more you think about it, the more you realize this election will really decide the future of America. It's not really just a Democrat versus Republican thing. It's really freedom versus authoritarianism. And I know the Harris campaign... They're making a big deal about freedom and how they're going to run on the idea of freedom. But the more you think about what Democrats mean by that, the more you realize, wait, they're not talking about freedom of speech, medical freedoms. They're not talking about freedom from big corporations. They're talking about abortion on demand. They're talking about desecrating American values. That's not freedom. It's not. 
and like freedom of speech, they support censorship. The Democrat Party, they want censorship. And for those that don't believe me, just a quick reminder that the Biden administration, they went after pro-life Catholics because they're against abortion. They did. I mean, this is not just a theory. They actually went after Catholics because they're pro-life. Is that freedom of speech? But what is that? That's censorship. And you know damn well, if Harris wins, she's going to do even more of that. Anyone that's just a Catholic, oh, be wary. The, the FBI might knock down your door at 3 a.m. for no reason. That's, the, that, that's what I'm most worried about if Trump loses. Again, you may disagree with Trump on some issues, fine. But this is just a, just a basic yes or no question. Do you support censorship? 80% of people are going to say, uh, no, we don't. And if that's the case, well, Trump is going to be the person that protect freedom of speech. Harris is the person that will support censorship. She will go after anyone that disagrees with her, like the Biden administration has done. This is not a theory. We know for a fact the Biden administration, they go after their political opponents. And it would get a thousand times worse with Harris. It would. So when you look at the election that way, not necessarily a Republican versus Democrat, but just, frankly, it's pro-American versus anti-American. It becomes very apparent that Trump's the right decision. He, he very much is. And RFK made this a big deal at the rally. He said, hey, I disagree with Trump on some stuff. Actually, quite a bit. But on the core issues that makes America, America, well, we agree on virtually everything. Again, we have disagreements, but... At the bare minimum, we know for a fact Trump would not support censorship. He would not support any of that. Now, I should make this clear. It wasn't just general statements of Trump saying, oh, I will support freedom of speech. I will fight against big pharma. It wasn't just that. He did make a couple specific policy proposals with RFK on stage. And I am surprised at how good these are. These are not just, you know things that don't matter. These are not things that are so insignificant that no one cares about them. These are actually pretty big deals. The first thing, of course, was he, has, he promised he will establish a presidential commission on assassinations, and RFK will be in charge of it. Yeah, a commission on assassinations. Hmm, I wonder why Trump decided to pick RFK. Oh, that's right. His uncle and his father got shot. It would make perfect sense to put RFK in this position. Because we want to figure out what actually happened to JFK. What happened to Bobby. And what happened to Trump. Where he thankfully did not get assassinated. But he was an inch away from dying. We had to figure out what the hell is going on here. Like what security failures happened. What, what's really going on here. What, what is the government covering up. This is a big deal. Like, of all the things Trump is promising, this might be the biggest thing because we can finally figure out what happened. The truth, not the crap the government claims happened. Why was JFK shot in Dallas? Why was Bobby shot? Well, what's going on here? Who was involved? Who knew about it? What, where's the documents? That's why this is a big deal. Because if it, if it comes out that, oh yeah, the... A certain agency knew about it and did nothing. That's a pretty big deal. You're talking about the president of the United States getting killed. And one of the government agencies might know something about it. Or knew something about it and did nothing. Again, I'm not saying that's 100% confirmed. But this will provide a layer of transparency that frankly we've needed for years. Like this might be the biggest issue with the government. There's no transparency. No one knows what the hell's going on. No one knows what really happened to JFK. If, the, if people don't believe you about how the president was assassinated, you have a massive problem. Like, if they don't trust you on that, they're not going to trust you on anything. If the, if the people don't trust the government on anything, you have a massive problem. And that's why I really believe this commission's a good idea for two reasons. One... People want to know what really happened to JFK. What happened to Bobby? We want real answers. Not the bullshit they're pushing. It could be true. I'm not denying that. But people want to know for sure what happened. 
how did the president of the United States get killed? And secondly, and possibly more importantly, it provides transparency, which we desperately need. Right now, there is no transparency in the government. No one knows what the hell is going on. It's very corrupt. It's the deep state. You don't know. So there's a bunch of reasons for why this is a good idea. But I think it's a net positive because who's against this? Who is against the idea of having a commission on presidential assassinations? Who? So this... this proposals universally supported. I guarantee you, if they pulled this, it would be like 80% that support it. Or 90. It would be basically everyone that says, uh, yeah, we should probably have a commission on this to figure out what's going on here. Now, there is another thing Trump did specifically propose, and it's another big one. He is proposing forming, I believe, a commission or launching a or panel, I should say, to investigate what's going on in America when it comes to health. Why are we seeing a bunch of chronic health problems now? Why are we seeing childhood diseases skyrocket? What's going on here? And this is another policy proposal that I think anyone with a brain would support. Like, uh, yeah, there's some big problems here. What, why are we seeing a sudden surge in chronic health issues? Why are we seeing childhood diseases skyrocket? What, what's going on here? Like, is it the food we're eating? Is it the water? What? Again, this is a proposal that no one's against. This is just common sense. Like, we, we got to figure out what's happening here. Why, why is the health of the average American getting worse? Like, what's causing that? And there's, um, there's many theories for what's going on here. I'm not going to get into it. But it would be fascinating to know what the hell is really going on here. Is it because of the food? Is it because of the water? Is it the air? Who knows? Which I'm not, I'm not making a grand conspiracy thing. I'm just saying that there could be many reasons for why this is happening. And it's a serious problem. Why are we seeing a bunch of chronic health problems now? Despite technology getting better, theoretically in medicine, you would think that would mean chronic health issues would become less and less of a thing. But in recent years, it's skyrocketed? Like, wait, what? what what's going on here? That's why the, it, these are just common sense proposals, but these are things that RFK makes a big deal about. And you realize, wait, RFK on many of the core issues is just a common sense guy. Like, of course we want to make sure the air is clean. Of course we want to make sure the food is healthy. It's not killing you. Of course, that's common sense. Why, why would anyone be against that? So these proposals, they're universally popular. People support it. It's common sense. And it, funny enough, it makes Trump seem like the common sense candidate. Not the unhinged, delusional Republican, it's no, the, the guy that says we need to establish a commission on assassinations to figure out what happened to JFK, establish a panel to figure out what's happening with chronic health problems, why is it skyrocketing? This is good stuff, it's universally popular, which by the way, it could unite many Americans, like we have a lot of disagreements, but this is stuff that everyone would agree to supporting, and some will oppose it obviously because it's Trump, but I guarantee you the majority of Americans, a super majority probably, would support all of this for sure, even if it's Trump proposing it. But either way, we just got to see what happens. This has been a very good week for Trump's campaign. I believe this will give him some serious momentum because it's not just the RFK endorsement that's big, which I think it, it will win over a bunch of his supporters. Already a bunch of them are saying, yeah, we're behind Trump now, 100%. But on top of that, it's giving Trump new messaging. It's giving a messaging about actual freedom, freedom of speech, medical freedoms, freedom from big pharma, all of that. It's just common sense stuff. It's good. I don't see how this hurts Trump in any way. I mean, some people are claiming that, oh, he's, he is appealing to the far left. What? This stuff's just common sense. We want to know what's happening with the government. What, what's really going on here? Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Godspeed to all of you.